Welcome back, everyone. This is the Flow Track Podcast. I'm Kevin. He is Gordon. Full disclosure, about 15 seconds before we started. Might have even been caught on mic. Gordon's like, I don't know what I'm going to do this episode. I don't. I don't know. You don't know don't. where you're going with it. There's a lot of... Th- yeah, I, I did not prepare. I mean, you prepared. Well, I prepared, but I didn't prepare, prepare. Oh, so you're at medium level of preparedness? Yeah, well, no. Actually, I prepared, but I don't know the words that are going to come out of my mouth. I'm kind well, of worried. I'm how like, is that different than? Because a lot of times I kind of like I, I I can trust what I'm about to say, but I'm not sure if I can trust what I'm about to say. Okay. Like I think I'm gonna come off. I think I'm when this is over an hour from now, I'm gonna be like, I probably shouldn't have said that. Okay. Well, okay, don't. <laughs> well, not like bad, bad. Uh, I'm talking about like. Oh, you're gonna have, you just be like wrong. I'm like, just gonna oh, be wrong. I got some. Well, you got a lot of stuff wrong on Friday too. Yeah, but... Uh, different wrong. Okay. Different wrong. What's up, chat? Everybody's in the chat saying hello. Uh, someone asked, where in the world are you? So now we have people checking in. Obviously, Tampa Eagle is from... Tampa? Correct. That'd is been he funny. actually from Tampa? Been, been cool if he's Sheboygan. It'd been great yeah. the whole time. Uh, David says, welcome to another edition of Sprint Talk Only on the chat. All right, well, let's... We can diversify it. Throw some distance questions in there. You got there wasn't di- much distance that happened, though, this past that's weekend. The, that's right? the problem, I guess. Uh, folks in the UK checking in as well. All in the game. Already getting on you about your Abby Steiner. Or not the Abby Steiner prediction, but the, the sub-22 for the 200 prediction. We'll get to the over-unders later. You excited for the over-unders? Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to find a video from the Carifta games. Oh, that, that was a bummer. Oh, no, 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 not, not that video. I'm okay. talking about a four by one that uh, went viral. Yeah, this is it. So we're going to put this in the chat so we can, we can react to this. We'll do this at the end of the show. Okay. That's from this Crystal Games? Yeah. I saw Krumi got hurt. That's yeah, a bummer. That... I feel terrible for him. Is it bad, bad? I, I didn't get a full Someone perhaps has, has read something. I never came across anything that had the uh, – if it was just a cramp or if it was something worse. But just coming off the – Sub 10 and breaking the record at champs for a young guy early in his career. Hated to see that because he was rolling again. He was up by a huge margin once again. And then. I mean, it could easily just be like a pulled hamstring and it's not that serious. It's a couple weeks and you're fine. Yeah. Here's hoping. Here's hoping. All right. We'll start with Miramar. Let's get into the action here. Women's 100. Let's start there. Shakira Richardson, 10.57. Wins the final. By a large margin, over two tenths of a second. She looked good in the opening round too, where she ran 10.75. Both the performances were wind aided. The 10.57 came with a plus 4.1. You put into the conversion calculator, gets you to 10.7 high. But let's remember what we talked about before this race. We said we don't care about the times. We wanted to see the margin of victory. Yeah. And in this case, it was big and it was a really good field that Richardson was running against and you could see you see that talent you see that ability you see why everybody's so excited every time she steps on the track and she was good last year but this this goes back to 2021 Richardson really right in the, in, the, in those early season meets that led into the trials where she was cranking up fast times running into headwinds and still posting impressive performances all the way through to the olympic trials which she dominated so this looked to me very similar to that, to that era of Richardson just two, two years ago. I agree, but that concerns me because what happened in either, all of those seasons? Well, 2021 was good. 2021 was good. There, there's this, there's this uh, idea that's out there. That's a good there, point. A good point. Yeah. Oh, when the championships come around, she's not going to run well. But 19, it, didn't, it wasn't good. Well, okay, but here's 19. You kind of get a mulligan. Away, in, in rookie year. Come, well, when you just... Came off a college season. Yeah. You ran 1075. Away, yeah. All right, didn't go that well. 21, USA's, she looked really good. There was nothing wrong with how she did at USA's. It was Very a suspension true. that came after it, which I, at the time I remember saying this alters the whole season because then she's off, she's not competing, and then she has to come back later on. I guess that Prefontaine race, though, kind of – Yeah. It kind of sure. made you forget about how good she was at the trials. Totally different rhythm, though. Your whole yeah. season gets interrupted. She has all this attention on her. So it's really just 2022. When we're, when we're talking about it, yeah. it's really just 2022 where we were shocked at, at that performance. And we never got a reason why, so we don't know why. So that's why I say when this goes back to 2021, Richardson, 
that's a really good spot to be in because that was her running fast and her dominating against American fields. And that's what we have here. And, we, and she has running a time that would dominate against most fields. Yeah, and you can't ask for a better opener. I, I was thinking that she was going to like – her ceiling for her opener was going to be like a 1095 after conversions or whatever. Obviously, the win, 1057, is, it's really a 1077. And that kind of shows based on what she ran in her prelim. Was she running the prelim? Her, pre, her prelim was win legal. No, no, no. That was windy too. Oh, it was windy, but it was not as windy. Ten seventy five with a yeah. two point eight. Yeah. So like two two performances that are in the high ten, ten sevens to, to low ten eights. Yeah. Uh, I thought she was going to run more like a ten ninety five, and you know, just be in the mix and kind of be like, all right, you're showing consistency. But I did not expect her to just like in race one jump right into old Shakari mode of. Yeah. I'm running times that are going to turn people's heads. That are going to get people looking and make people start believing that she should be a metal contender, right? Yeah. Because let's be honest. If any of the Jamaicans were to run 1057 with 4.1 wind, if yeah. Shellyanne were to run that, everyone would be like, all right, Shellyanne, another year. Or if Elaine Thompson Hurrah ran that, we'd be like, oh, it's Olympic Elaine Thompson all over again. Oh, and for good reason. For because, good reason, because yeah. there's pedigree to what they've done. They've done at championship level. But this these type of times, that this time that she ran, or back-to-back -back time she ran, are times that medical tenders run. 100%. And we had just did our top 10 a couple we did, weeks we ago. Didn't even rank her. She wasn't even in the top 10. And so now, now we, obviously, yeah, obviously rank her. it's, yeah, it's obviously going to change. Her? I'd have to look at it again. That, see, that's a big question. Like, there's the pedigree of the top three Jamaicans, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's a pedigree of the people who always are in the finals, like Kambunji and Tolu mm -hmm. and Dina Asher Smith. And probably you're, you're going to assume um, Julian Alfred mm -hmm. based on how she's running. So there's all these people who have like a claim to be in the mix. Who are we taking off the list to put well, to carry on? First things first, you look at it from the American perspective. Right? Leah, you still put Aaliyah Hobbs ahead of her, right? I would still have Hobbs ahead of her. Hobbs ran really well this weekend. But other than that, you, you'd probably put Richardson in that group. So there's, there's some Americans that she moved in front of right now, right? Right now. It doesn't mean that's going to be yeah. the case throughout the season. But when you win by that much, and then you can also back up and take a look back at Texas Relays, and now you have a, some times to confirm what you thought you saw, which was, yeah, that four-by-one leg looked pretty good that yeah. she ran. So put those two things together. Obviously a lot more weight on these two races in Miramar. Yeah, she's, if you're ranking Americans, you got to put her in the top three, which means you put her top ten in the world. But yeah, we're not rushing to say, oh, lock for the podium, guarantee for the podium. No, none of that. But look at the historic nature of the time. Only three people, have, or two two women actually, have covered 100 meters faster. Yes, the win matters. Yes, it's early April. Put all the caveats aside. aside. You can't start a season better than that. Yeah. I guess the, the main question that we're always going to have throughout the, this entire regular season is will she do it when it matters most? And kind of, it's kind of like the NBA. I know I like doing the NBA, but there's a lot of great NBA players who like do phenomenal regular season moments, and then they have yet to get, you know, break the glass ceiling in the in the. Playoffs. I can think of like, I can uh, think of a team. Yeah, yeah. I can think of a team too. But you know, it takes time for people like LeBron James kept on losing, losing, and then all of a sudden he yeah uh, 2012 at Miami started winning right and. Yeah. Giannis and all these people and Shakari could be in that situation where like you're in that group until you're not yeah and but then when you're not you no one can ever hold it against you yeah because right? once you've got the global gold medal or global medal then it then all that's always, gone away the doubt's gone but there you, you gotta if you were a betting man would you bet on the Jamaicans and the people who've been in the in the mix at the international level yeah or Shakari who is thrown together so far a good regular season but you just you don't know yeah no you'd still go with the, the jamaican no. you go with the no you go still go with the jamaican trio but again the fact that she's back in that conversation is the first step because we've seen this before and we've seen her go beyond this before like in 2021 when she kept rolling and there was probably people back in 2021 who's ah oh, it's early not see what happens when it comes to next month. Okay, uh, it's still early. See what happens when it comes to USA's. And then she went and did USA's and blew it out of the water. So we've seen this plus a little bit more. But yeah, there's always going to be 
questions and doubts. People are always, and not just with her, with everybody. Yeah. Oh, can they do it in Europe? Oh, can they do it in a championship setting? Oh, can they do it in against August? Against Jamaican, too. Yeah, against, th there's always going to be another layer of doubt that you can Add to it. throw on. You can do that with most people. In, in most sports. In most sports at all times. There's a few people who are immune to that sort of critique. Everybody else is going to get it. Her more so than everybody else because she's been in such a high profile position for going on four years now, back to 2019 in Austin, Texas at the NCAA championships when she ran 1075 and and then went pro. Like the eyes are all are gonna be on her. But this was, hey, I'm not just gonna be another sprinter. I'm not just gonna be in the Diamond Leagues and in the mix to make the US team. I, I still have that that transcendent ability. So she runs ten seventy seven if there was 2.0 wind, right? Basically, it's a 0.2 uh, wind. Like, the 4.1 wind is basically 0.2 seconds advantage. So if she had 2.0 wind, though... Yeah, she would still be... That'd be really fast. She would fast. be running low 1070s. Yeah, yeah. When, like, with a 2.0 wind. So it's not that... If she had, like, perfect 1.9 wind or 2.0 wind, we could see a wind legal extremely fast time. Maybe even flirt in the yeah the ten six and again, but that's why times are great and it's awesome to talk about it. But like, let's just look at competition because she ran a race against a, a really good field, and then look at the margin of victory because you're never going to get that ideal setup to know exact to be able to quantify to the exact hundredth of a second where everybody's at. So yeah, she did race against good field, but when he sometimes the field looks good on paper, and then you see the field perform, and you're like, ah, hey, what's the field actually? It's good. good. It's I just, mean, Terry's it, the only. When looking at this, I feel like Terry's the only real. Because Melissa man. Jefferson did not run like Melissa Jefferson of last year. She ran like 11 3. 11 1. 11 1. Sorry, 11, 1. my eyes are <laughs> Great blurry. Job. Yeah, but you also got to remember it's early. So for a lot of these people in a regular world, running low 11s, high 10s, yeah. wind dependent is, is a good field. I'm just, it's not, it's not her against a bunch of, you know, college kids. Yeah. No, that's true. This is this is against people she's going to need to beat if she wants to make yeah, I guess the you team. Just, it's really just Aaliyah Hobbs not there, right? Right. And speaking of Aaliyah and maybe, Hobbs. Who else? Is there anyone else that we're missing? Uh, well, speaking of Aaliyah Hobbs. Yeah, let's jump over to Aaliyah Hobbs and we'll come back to Miramar for a sec. Because uh, she had a great one, Aaliyah Hobbs, over the weekend. Her indoor season was spectacular. 1087 in LSU. So that's world leading because it was wind legal. So 1087, what was the wind though? Oh, come on. Let's stop. Let's stop doing the wind no, calculation. No, I'm going to convert both. I'm going to convert both and then see who ran faster. This is the wind calculation episode yeah, wind cal of the uh, Flow Track so podcast. So she ran 1087 with what wind? Do we know? I don't know. Let I me, know. Do you really want me to look it up? I, I'm going to look this it up. This is really important to you? Yeah. 2.0 wind. That's ideal. Some might say. Some might say, whenever I see a 2.0 wind, I always feel like the timers are getting paid under the table. No. <laughs> so that converts to a... 10.98 mm -hmm. at zero wind. So Shakari runs 10.77 at 0, 0.0 wind. She's running 10.98 at zero point wind. So maybe but then this you Shikari factor in the track and all no, this. No, track, track is flat and 100 meters. Uh, different types. Of I'm it's just not saying. Uphill. No, it's hold just on. Not part. They're going to run against each other. Yeah, we'll but figure it out. I'm just saying. She did Shikari great. basically ran 0.2 seconds faster, which is a lot. But yeah, we still have Hobbs one in the U.S. I would still have Hobbs one. I don't know. Yeah, I would too. But like, looking now that I do the wind conversions, You're 1087 putting... with 2.0 wind is not as impressive Again, as 1057 with 4.1. Props, 4. Wind, 1 props wind. to the one wind conversion site that was ever created. Oh, yeah, Jay Marika. Yeah, Jonas Marika. You LMU. No yeah. one would have ever anticipated that all of our. Uh, analysis. He probably all of sees our hopes his like, and dreams. Page views go up every weekend whenever someone <laughs> runs are, a fast wind time. If it's a plus three, it's a great day. <laughs> For plus him. five, even better. Like the or higher, minus. The minus ones are fun too. The minus ones are fun too, but the minus ones count. Plus ones don't. Yeah. So then you got to do all this math. I just, for me, Hobbs, solid run, continuing what she did indoors, and it is early. Well, there's one last way we can. Analyze these wind performances. No more wind. Please no, stop with the wind. On, uh, we're going to analyze it one last time. And that is with World Athletics Converter. Oh, because they assign points. They assign on points. It. Okay. I'll, I'll allow this one last conversion. So all. We're going to do this. Best by athlete. So, Aaliyah Hobbs' 1087 is worth 
1,228 points. Mm -hmm. Shakari Richardson's 1057, 1,271 points. So what is... Wait, what was the difference? I, it was a on. difference of a lot. It's a difference of like 50 points. So let's look at what's 1271 last year when legal would have been. We're going to do only regular. Best by athlete. 1271. <laughs> this is great. That would have been the second best win legal time last year behind Shelly Ann. Yeah. That would have been better than what Shuka Jackson ran. At what? What was her time? Well, Shelly ran 1062. No, a 1062 wind legal is, is, better, not, is, than be, a, is yeah. better than a 1057 with a plus 4.1. How does that make sense? That makes sense. 1062 wind legal is a better performance than 1057. Oh, I thought, with you, said the, I thought you said the opposite. No, no, it's 10... Shelly and one. The, the next best is 1071 Sharika Jackson in Monaco is worse. But didn't we just say it converts to a high 107 according to this our is... LMU calculator? Yeah, but that's with zero wind. Okay, what did, what did, that was 0.4 wind. Okay. I'm just saying it, it converts. I still think we're in the. I still think we're in the, the weeds here a bit. No, we're not. Yeah, what we I'm are. what I'm trying to get to is this performance would have been the number two performance last year behind Shelly. Performer last year. Uh, Jervon in the chat. Conversions aren't official. However, it was a good win for her. Thank you. Love it. Good win or good wind. Good win. <laughs> win. Okay, I had to look at it twice. But my, my point is, yeah, none of this stuff's official. Those the points are the points. So they're really relevant. Yeah, that's a huge gap. 50. I'm just saying it was, it was the number two performance last year. I'm not down. Yeah, I'm not downplaying it. I'm just saying we have a long way to go. I'm just, she's on pace to run like 1069 <laughs> when legal. Yeah, if you did the math, if you yeah. manipulate all the conversions yeah. and everything. But the thing is, that race is in the past now. It's what she's going to do for the next race. That's, that's what we're focused on. Looking forward, Gordon. Well, okay. <laughs> Hold on. All right, that's fine. She carry, she's uh, I would, I think I would rank her uh, above Aaliyah Hobbs right now. So you'd have her like near Julian off. Where do we have? I would have her above Julian right now. Really? Yeah. Why not? I'm not gonna hold 2022 against her. Whatever. We had Asher Smith four, Alfred five, Hobbs six. So you think she's in that middle? I put her five. Middle territory. I put her five. Yeah. All right, let's go back to Miramar. Nico, if you could pull, go back to that other results page. Boom, here we go. Let's go to women's 200. Abby Steiner gets the win, 22.23. Another victory for me in the over-unders. Thank you, Gordon. I don't know, I forgot what the line was. Was it 21? Yeah. Okay. She got close to it. Had a good run. Also, a good run for Chamari Davis, who got a PR. These were wind legal, by the way. Yeah, how do you get 4.0 wind? And then 1.8 wind. I should have got that. If I got the 4.0 wind, she runs sub 22. Yeah. <laughs> you're just mad you lost. Her reaction time compared to Tamara Davis was. All right. Is that it on the analysis? You're going to look at the reaction time? <laughs> yeah, I don't really know. I mean, she ran. This is, this is going to be like her eighth best time she runs this year. So it's really nothing from it. Fair enough. All right. Women's 400. Uh, Shamir Little got the win. Sharika Jackson got third in yeah. this race, which is super. We, we screwed that one up. We were betting on the. What was it we were betting on? The margin, the margin of, victory, of victory, right? Yeah. The answer was a negative. Negative, <laughs> oh, I, negative a second. Luckily, we uh, both picked the same thing. So what do we take from this? The I mean, Shamir Little's always been good at the quarter, so she's still good at the quarter. Yeah. And Sharika Jackson, I think, is going to keep running the 100 and the 200, which is I think this anyway. is like Sharika's like, yeah, 400. I'm not going to keep, I'm not doing that. Yeah, I was thinking mid 50s based on what she debuted with, right? Yeah. I thought she would like go out there and run lo low 50s and like dominate, but I feel like maybe she's really looking at the 400 the way like Usain Bolt looks at the 400. So I guess I'll do it if Coach forces me to do it, but I'm not going to die for the 400 anymore. I'm a 1 2 woman, so. Can't blame him. What are you looking up right now? I want to watch the race again. Oh. I'm trying to pull up the race. To see if she pulled up? Well, just to see what the if there was an issue or anything like that. But this is... You fast oh, forward this, this is going to take a little bit of time. You should have done this prep. You should have prepped for the podcast like yeah. I did. Also, this is... This is blurry guy. Uh, what are you going to learn from <laughs> this? You're not going to learn anything from this. A lot this. of analysis here. No, well, no. And, and, and Shamir Little. Solid. Again, yeah, another four meter hurdler. No, I just it's, I feel like she's I feel like she's kind of just not 
all in on 400. You're talking about Jackson? Yeah. I think she's just like, do it, she was get so, some endurance. She was, she was so fast before. I know, but. We just have this stupid, I head, thought, we have I, this stupid headline. We're just like, how fast will she run? And yeah, should she do the two, we look four, dumb, double now? But I think the reality is, I think Sharika Jackson was never really actually thinking about getting into the 400. Even though she kind of flirted with it, with the 50-point opener. Similar to Fred Curley. Fred Curley can run a 44 if he wants, but he's not going to like. Fred Curley goes out there and runs 44. He's not going hot. to the well to run a quarter in April is what you're yeah. saying. There we go. That's We got it. We were trying to get to that. That was what we were I trying was to distracted. Get to. I don't know what excuse you have. All right. Uh, next uh, women's eight. Uh, Aji Wilson, 202. Uh, high hurdles. Tania Marshall, 12-6. Men's 100. Here we go. This is impressive. Jamaica. Are you watching? Jamaica, are you listening? Well, all right, now you're just trying to oblique give Seville red meat to the no. The people. This is great. The only the only bummer with the, I wanted that legal nine nine one, but whatever. He got it. Jamaica goes one two. Seville, who I picked last year, almost got. What was the bet? If you got gold, you're gonna buy me a, a house Jamaican. Oh no, to buy you a flight to Jamaica. Yeah. If you and then gold. if Blake won, I was gonna do the same for you. Yeah. They're really close. This is it. It's happening. Yeah, I mean, 991 is good. It's a good, it's a solid performance. It shows that they are maturing into putting together, like, all right, they've gone through the, like, they, they're they really more mature going into this year than they were last year. As they get older, they're wiser. They're, I just feel like they're beating, consist, they're running consistently from their 60s outdoors to this. Yep. It's looking good for them. They're both, I think, likely to make the final. I don't yet see them... F- breaking into the top three yet because i still think u.s has a lock on the top three in my opinion but things may change if seville and, and or blake go out there and run a couple nine eights mm-hmm. then i might start getting a little bit more confident in their ability to break into the top three but i still you know curly's curly bracy's bracy bromel's bromel it's gonna be hard. all that is true that you just said it's gonna be hard for them to break through that seville in the opening round too went nine nine five win legal so consistency for him, I thought what Otto Bolden said in the broadcast was really true, and it kind of it echoes what you said. Which he said, "I you can't really imagine world championship and Olympic finals without this guy anymore. Like he's he's worked his way up to the level of he's just going to be in the final yeah. every time. Like that's that's the future for Seville, which is which is the first step. You need to get in him first, and then and then you start thriving. And last year he almost got a medal. Seville's the fastest non-American in the world right now. Uh, yeah." Well, not just the fastest. I mean, not I by think PR, not by PR, but I think he's the best. He, yeah. he would be the one I, I would bet on. Now, if you're looking at this from an American perspective, you're looking fourth, and you have some reasons for optimism because we haven't seen Ronnie Baker in a while. Uh, he comes out in the opening heat, uh, runs 10:01, finishes behind Seville, and then in the final 9:98, again, slightly above the allowable limit, a 1 100th behind Aaron Brown. You know, a couple hundreds behind Blake and Seville, but I think Baker. Now, we want to see a few more races from him. I'd like to see a few more races from him, but with all that off time to go sub ten this early, even if it is slightly wind aided, I think it's huge. And we're setting up this dream one hundred final at USA's, which is gonna be great. Yep, we're not gonna get it because we know Curly's not gonna run the right, every. But no, the dream we know, but that. Isn't the dream because we know he's not going to be in there. Okay, okay, okay. The dream is this. I'll show you what the dream is. Oh, okay. It's Bracey. Yeah. It's Bromel. Okay. Everyone with the letter okay, You're B. making fun of my I'm not making fun of I here. am dreaming with you. Bromel, Bracey, Coleman, Lyles, Norman. Baker. Baker. That, that's six. And whatever. It don't matter. Whoever else. There'll be somebody else that's interesting. Williams? Sure. If but he if he's healthy? Yeah. I'm not going to get picky over the last And another couple. B. You know what the last B is? Bowling. There you, go. you have to put them in every race. But I'm saying six. If those six make it, yeah, that's must see. It's gonna be must see anyway. Because now Baker's showing. We talked about it on Friday show. He was really close. He was really close in 2021. A couple things break his way. He's on the podium. Maybe even getting uh, gold or silver. Why do you think Andrew Hudson of Jamaica didn't run the final? Because he ran 10:07. Pretty good. Yeah, he, that's he, a good run for he him. He got third in his prelim. Did he run? He didn't run the two either. All right, let's talk about the two. Let's talk about the two. I don't want to talk about the two. Gordon want to talk about the two. Not, we don't in the chat, do you want to hear Gordon talk about the two? 
May if you're new to the chat, let me catch you up on a couple things. Gordon, big believer in, in Kenny B. I, I'm a big believer in Kenny B. Went to a workout, a film workout back in 2019 out in Atumwa, Iowa at Indian Hills Community College. So we've known about Kenny B for a while. And you picked him to win the gold medal this year, which he still could do. He was not eliminated based on Saturday's results, right? That's not how track works? No, that's not how track works. Right. He's not eliminated. But he got third. You were predicting a for sure sub-20. He gets third, goes 20.3. Coleman and Tobogo both timed at 20.00 here. But I don't – I'm not worried. I'm not going to be worried for you. Okay. I, I know you are the one who has more invested right now in Kenny, but – I don't think you have anything to worry about. I'm not worried because it's race one. I'll be worried if it happens in race two. Mm -hmm. I am annoyed because I wanted a little bit of some. You wanted to be like, hey, I be here like, I hey, am. Hey. I saw, uh, it's coming. I want to be able to brag. Fire. You know? yeah. It's basically I'm starting the regular season on like a five-game losing streak. And I'm like, you know. I, but that's I, not how track works. You could totally forget this happens. Yeah. And that's this, what, this will not be held against if him. The next, if he goes out a week from now and runs like 19-9 and wins a race, I'll be like, all right. First one was a Rust Buster. Yeah. I mean, Noah Lyles had weird Rust Buster races, and he went on to win world titles. Cur People who win world titles sometimes lose their opening race. It does happen. Actually, I should, do a, I should do a deep dive. How many people have won a world title who lost race one of the year? You should get on that. I mean, that's a project that you'd want to take on I'm this time of year. That. But yeah, uh, I mean. Here's what we're forgetting. When it comes to all these results, it's the beginning part of April. USA is the beginning part of July. It's an eternity yeah. in, in the in sports world. I mean, so I'm bummed for Ben Nair because I thought he would come out and perform. It looks good for Tobogo and Coleman, mainly Coleman too. I Coleman running 20 flat. I don't think he's a good 200 meter runner, and he's now. Well, running, he's obviously a good 200 meter runner. From, good, like compared to what his. He's never pursued it fully. Yeah. You've never been. But a, you're never going to look at Coleman the same in a 200 the way you look at Lyles. Well, and no, no, Knighton. yeah, it's not. It's more like Bromel. Ran twos in college. Yeah. But then once college ended, the focus pretty much yeah, entirely shifted. Yeah, like in the two either. Like, well, that's what I'm saying. You're yeah. just, but he has run good 200 meter times. But his interests, his focus has shifted. Yeah, everyone got mad when I said, yeah. I mean, everyone is great. No, I'm not. I'm just saying, I'm just saying you run 20 0 and you beat Tobogo. You're, you're good in the 200. You're just better in the 100. What I'm saying, but like for him to run 20 0, I thought his ability was like a 21 guy or 20.2 guy. He runs 20 0. That makes me look at him as. He is looking good this season. Coleman. I was trying to find a way to compliment him. Okay. I'm saying his tw him running 20.0 is a positive indicator of what his potential is going to be this year. Because I thought he was more of a 20.1 guy based off of where he is right now in his career. But if he's running 20.0, it makes me think his 100 is actually going to be a little bit better than we can think. And we might just might have a 2019 version of Coleman and not the 2022 version of Coleman, which finished what sixth? Uh, it was at mm -hmm. well. Let's let's fact check here. So last year he ran in 1992, 2019 ran 1991, and then 2017 when he was still in college he ran 1985. That's his PR. So he's he's had some some fast ones. Yeah, he's but, also running those at strange times of year. Yeah, for the purpose of getting ready for another event, not not like hey. I mean, he beat the silver medalist. Beat the silver medalist, and he beat a guy in Tobago who's yeah. legit. So, anytime you beat the silver medalist, that's a good sign. Yeah. Anyway. Also, the over-under for this was 20 Good line. Seconds. You set, yeah, you set the line well. Nice job. Uh, But Coleman, I, I picked the under, and according to the results here, <laughs> let's zoom in on those results on the number 20, Uh, Nico, next to Coleman's name. According to the results, he ran 19.996 seconds. That is under 20, according to my math. 19 point, uh, you're showing the 100, we're showing the 200 uh, results. Uh, yeah, this is 19.996. So in the over-under, no. he ran under 20 seconds. No, his time is listed as 20.00. What's that, that time underneath a, that? What's 19.996 what, mean? Let me look on World Athletics. Is that what's reported on World Athletics? I don't know, but when last time I saw 19.996, that number is less than 20.0. Right here it is, right here. What's that say? What's that say? We're not, the, that's, are those the official results? This is the official that's, that's results page. This that's is how, the official timer. That's the how, official timer said he ran 19.996. That's how timing works, though. You, you, you round up like that. 
Sorry, it's a push. Good line. No, though. it's not push. It's an under, no. and I got it right. No, and I'm good. Good that's line. A win. I commend you on setting Kevin, a good line. You got to give him way to go, Gordon. We did say if whoever picks a line and then they get, come up right, they get bonus. But points. no, but I said no because I used to set the lines and I never got credit for it. You can't add it in after the fact. Men's quarter. This is a bummer because Stephen Gardner scratched. I wanted to see him. We didn't get him. And Matthew Smith. Oh, Ma- Smith Matthew Hudson Smith. Yeah, as well. Uh, men's eight. Ryan Sanchez. Men's high hurdles. Um, Edwards and then Amir Latin won the 400 hurdles. The big 400 meter hurdle news though came from Rye Benjamin running an open quarter at USC when he ran a personal best. He ran 44.21, uh, which is number two in the world this year behind Van Eker. And you're saying to yourself, Kevin, it's only April. Stop with the yearly rankings that's irrelevant but we did some research here gordon yeah we're gonna tell nico it's on the the rundown rye benjamin runs 44 21. i did some research i was like let's go to last year because we've already had two guys run 44 21 or faster how many guys last year were running those sort of times forget about april or may just the entire season how many guys were running that fast and of course you got norman you got champ allison you got Karani James, you got Randolph Ross, and Gardner ran exactly 44-21. That's it. There were five guys in all of last year, the whole season, who ran 44-21 or faster. And we've already had two of them this year. One of them's not even a foreign hurdler. This also makes me think, we talked about this before, people don't take my advice when it comes to what event they should run, which is probably smart because my, you know, their career is in their hands. I shouldn't be influencing them in any way. But in the world where Norman goes to the one, Benjamin's always been great in the quarter. He's been way better than his PR. He's better than this. He He's a sub-44 guy. Yeah. If you go back, look at his uh, relay splits at USC or look at his 200-meter times, Benjamin could be a medalist right now in the open quarter, especially if Norman's not there. How high he can get on the podium, I'm not sure. But it also makes me think about that. It's like, would you rather battle Dos Santos and Warholm, or would you rather navigate through you know, Van Niekerk, Stephen Gardner, Karani James, Matthew Hudson Smith? I think you could argue that 400 could get a medal too. Could too, you argue that... Too bad you can't double. Or maybe you can. That maybe Norman and Benjamin are colluding? Do, doing a swap? Well, yeah, except like, they're not switching the right. Advantage, they're, just, they're just like, Norman is like, hey man, I want to give you a, a gold. I understand Carson Warholm is never going to leave the event, so... Here's the deal. I'll go to the 100, and you can come in and take my spot in the 400. Yeah. I'll give you my workouts. You can do all my 400-meter open <laughs> workouts. Well, he already has them, I think, because he sees them all the time. I Norm, or Benjamin's one of those guys who's just – he's good at everything because he's run some open 100s that are pretty good. Like if you did, yeah, he ran a good 200 too. If you – and I'm sure – I don't know if you ever ran the high hurdles. You probably did it back in high school or something. But if he did like high hurdles now, I'm sure he'd be good. And if you took – you know, his PRs from a bunch of different events and put them together. I'm sure he's in rarefied air just in terms of the one, the two, the four, the, the 400 hurdles. Um, so it, it shouldn't be any surprise that he's this that he's this good and his PR is long due for a little bit of a a, a, a makeover. So I'm surprised. I'm not surprised that he did it. But yeah, I think he could be a, a podium guy in the in the quarter. Do you think? Do you agree? Yeah. I mean, come on, dude. He, he's He's one of the best 400 meter. A lot of the 400 meter hurdlers are great 400 meter runners because they run literally the exact same distance. <laughs> well, he, yeah, and he trained with Norman for all their trains with Norman. Yeah, there's enough. A, there's see. a fun video from like 18 or 19 or 17 where they're at like a Diamond Lake 200. Oh, they're doing and they the both thing, the yeah. exact same warm up at the same time. It's really funny. I think I saw it somewhere too where maybe I interviewed him. I don't remember. But basically, they sometimes they have to split up because otherwise they'll just. Go over, too hard. Compete against each other. Yeah, yeah. Like, so they had to, like, they'd be at the track at the same time. And they started but, like, the opposite size of the track and they run like that. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, 200 meter start line. You, 100 meter start. 100 meter, go. They'll probably, or do they put, this is what they do. They probably put them on opposite sides of the track mm-hmm. and they say, practice isn't over till one of you catches someone. And they just go. And then whoever catches. Infinity race. And then whoever catches who doesn't have to go to practice the next day. So they both are fighting for it. Well, and 
the Dos Santos news obviously would impact that metal situation because if Dos Santos is out or really limited, then you think, all right, but that it's, it's just Warhol yeah. then. It's just yeah. Warhol. And it, that's the thing he's been chasing this whole time, like ever since 2019. He's had three championships now where um, he's, he's gone against Warhol and Dos Santos for the last couple, and he hasn't been able to get the gold. So I understand just wanting to get that four-meter hurdle gold, but – and this is all going to be hindsight – 2020 type situation a week or a month or after worlds we could look back and when we see the 400 field say oh man maybe benjamin could have actually done it or at least could have got a medal maybe he's doubling maybe that's the 400 400 doubles it's not the the women's field maybe that's the one hiding in plain sight let's talk a little bit about the carifta games you read in the chat just, I'm just, I wanted to like uh, do a little softer transition to like read some comments and then go to the next. Okay. Topic. After you. It's kind of ruined now, but okay. <laughs> uh... Well, I just got really excited for this race. Let's just show it right now. Go right now. Go so it. I can't. Hold on. Read Look at it. Watch this finish. Watch this finish. It's Bahamas and Jamaica. Bahamas with a massive lead. And then Jamaica runs them down. Not only runs them down. But eyes him as he crosses the finish line, saying, "This is this is my this is my race. This is my. I don't know if it's. I'm not sure where where was this held. Was it in the Bahamas? It might have been in the Bahamas. I don't know. But wherever it was, they were saying this is my track. And I thought it was a very fun four by one finish. Seeing Jamaica and Bahamas go at it like that. Fiftieth, uh, I think it was the fiftieth Carifta Games. Yeah, this is the fiftieth. Dang, Carifta Games. It's a, game. a lot of games. But yeah, the under twenty boys four by one was. The race of the, of the bean. In it's, yeah, in, in the Bahamas. In the Bahamas. So on their own track, just shows him up and just he had a big lead. We're too. getting a lot of people staring at other people the last few years. Is this the go-to celebration? It all started it's, with the LSU. Well, probably started one before then. Houston. But I mean, you even got you got 10K runners doing it. Now. Yeah, you got 10K <laughs> runners doing it. You got Noah Lyles pointing to the the the, the uh, timer. Yeah. Ooh, oh yeah, uh, Bailey didn't Bailey do that against Bolt? At the, like, did he look at him or he did something where he, he celebrated and that really got him going? Yeah. Just like Bailey. I mean, he took his, took his shot. I Dude, mean, I, if you're going to have a win over Bolt, take it. I like it. I like it at that, at that point. But now it's just it seems like every single – Yeah. I'd say we're going to have a situation where someone turns and then gets beat. But that's happening Or they already. turn to the, the person <laughs> left and the person on the right <laughs> passes them. <laughs> that would be the ultimate like yeah. boom. And then someone says, oh, that would be the greatest moment. Yeah. Okay. I want to see that happen. But yeah. All right. Man, this got me excited for Penn Relays, too. So oh, yeah. To make a run down the Bahamas. Well, and it also made me miss, like, World Ooh. Relays. Yeah. Because well, you, you like it when they're competing in the national the national colors. Yeah. And Look it, at this. Look at Watch. He just – he's going, he passes him, and then he looks to oh, his left. Oh, we got left, the head-on shot. I didn't know we had the head-on like, shot. And he's like, boom. Yep. Right nope. There. I got you. That was fun. Anyway. Yeah. I, I think uh, – oh, hold on. Javon says the 4x1 U20 is getting rerun at 3.15 p.m. Eastern. Why is it getting rerun? You got to fill us in here. Pull up the results. See if you can find the results. <laughs> this viral moment didn't actually count. Why, why is that? That makes no sense. Okay, Gordon. So this happened in the uh, 4x1 U20 finals? Yeah, we're taking your word for it, but any info that you can provide will be greatly appreciated. Yeah, it looks like all the top teams yeah, finished. No, this, There's no DQs this, this there. It happened. Meet's over. Isn't it over? Uh, yesterday. No. Hold on. Oh, the, no. There's a No, it's not being rerun. What's this guy talking No, about? yesterday and today. Why were they rerun it? It's Sunday and Monday. The old Sunday-Monday meet. I don't know what they're reading. I see results final. Yeah. Here, move your mic in front of you. Sorry. Are oh, you good. You see results final? All right. Well, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I don't know what I'm He doing. says uh, I was protested by another country. Oh. We need more details. Yeah, I don't know. Fun finish I'm regardless. I'm not prepared. It's track. A lot of protests sometimes. I like uh, – this is Sunday, Monday meet. That's interesting to me. Any, any more? Nothing? No. Okay. That's it. Gordon's, that's all Gordon's got. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> What oh, wait, hold on. This could be actual. Okay, hold on, hold on. We're getting, we're we getting get, details. Get, the the chat is coming through, and I appreciate chat, your chat sorry. because 
you know. Ryan I'm, Windhorse of the situation. Well, going through this on their last minute, I was more just dialed in on the Miramar stuff. Um, here we go. And we're going to take the chat's word for it. <laughs> yeah, it's just... AJT. Sources. Uh, yeah, sources close to the, to the chat on YouTube. This okay. is great journalisming. Grenada protested saying they didn't have enough time to recover after a faulty start, and surprisingly their protest was accepted. LOL. Then Marsha says Jamaica is not going to participate in the rerun, and AJT says the same thing. Ryan's Okay, so multiple people say Jamaica is not participating in the rerun. Out of principle. And one person says the reason for the rerun was Grenada protesting because they didn't have to, enough time to recover after a false start. Yeah, you can't, you can't rerun a race because of that. Then Sorry. why are they approving it? They shouldn't have, I don't think. I mean, there would be a situation. Everybody at the same time, correct? Yeah, how they, you, they all had the same amount of time to recover. Yeah, why did Grenada? Maybe, maybe they ran farther and on they the didn't hear back, the time. Hear the gun. That's a fun one. But you can't. Once the gun goes off, you're you're the second time you're you're in now. Yeah. We can't we be doing this race on the next day. I th everyone's gonna be using it as a hail mary now moving forward. Hey, I didn't have enough time. That's why I lost. Can we? Can that, can't have everyone come back and rerun it for me <laughs> tomorrow? Not tomorrow. Today, tomorrow. We're just gonna do that. That. Also, are they so they're going to rerun it and they're going to officially declare the winner of that race? But Jamaica's not going to do it. Or should they just let Grenada run by themselves and then they can run on time? And if they run faster than that time, they're in. Maybe. They win. Well, it sounds like we need to add another true 2023 champion to our board. Yeah. It's Daniel Roberts. Daniel Roberts. World Indoor, World Indoor Tour, Tour champion. champion. Jamaica, Jamaica men. Men's U20 Carifta Games 4x1. And there was one other one. I don't remember what it was. Uh, should have wrote it down. I don't remember. Yeah. But yeah, that doesn't make any sense. They're really gonna do that. So it says the uh, the compromise. Okay, are people are saying uh, Albert says the Bahamian didn't even start. He got left in the block, so it wasn't even a false start. Everyone ran about forty meters, but that's Bahamas, not. But that makes sense. Bahama was in the lead. How did they not? They were winning. No, no, but it's Grenada that protested. Not Bahamas. But but the Bahamas... Basically, they're saying, why did they even call it back? Are they talking about that race? Because that race did not look like... Yeah, they're all talking about that race. They're, they're not talking about like a 4x4 four four they're, they're ahead of you, believe it or not. They're, ahead or, of me? they're a little bit more dialed in. No, but I'm saying they're... I don't know how the Bahamians could Bahamians. have... The Bahamians could have had a bad start because they were literally winning the race. No, no, no. They, had, they got left the box. Then they called it back. They're saying there shouldn't have ever, never even been a callback because the reason they got called back, like the guy didn't even start. It wasn't even a false start. It was like oh. a no start. They called it back. They fired the gun again. Grenada said, hey, we didn't have enough time to prepare. The, the protest was accepted. Now they're rerunning again today, but Jamaica, the winners, are not participating in it. Thomas says, Krifta is going on today, Gordon. Geez, do you know anything about track? On, I leave, don't. Leave Gordon alone. I mean, come on. He's been how many, for a decade. How many track meets happen on a Monday? Well, like 95% of the chat is dialed into this specific track meet. I just thought it ended on a Sunday. Yeah. The race with the Bahamas was the second race after the recall. They had the leadoff runner run about 80 to 90 all out while Bahamas and Jamaica ran a few meters. Okay. So now we're getting more clarity. So basically, Grenada didn't want them to start. I'm sure they said it at the moment. This happened a little bit uh, indoors. So last year with the 60, they did the recall. You remember that? Yeah, and then they waited, and then there was all this drama about, okay, well, when do we do it? Because they ran a whole 60. You can't just put them back on the line again, and the coaches are all arguing and politicking about when, when the rerun should take place. I think they moved it after another event, didn't they? What did they end up doing with that 60? Did they wait? Did they run another event, and then they went back to the 60? I don't remember. They, they didn't. I don't think they did a bang-bang, or maybe they just did a delay. So I have another uh, on-the-fly topic that I wanted to bring up. Good. Well, this one went really well. Okay. So, let's keep so it rolling. Nico, I added it in the run of show at the bottom. We're going to bring up this. Oh, uh, we have the over-unders to do, too. We got to get to that in a second. We don't need to talk about that. Yeah, we do. I want we'll to see we'll, what my lead is. And I just want to see what we'll my talk lead about is. The, we'll do those over-unders on Friday. Gordon, I think we should make sure we cherish no, we every did. episode, and we should do it today. Let's do it today. Okay, let's zoom in on these top 100-meter uh, rankings. More sprints. More sprints. Just... So there's a reason why I put this up here. So we zoom in on the, basically 1 through 10 or 1 through 7. Just lean in on the sprint stuff. Let's scroll down and zoom in on this. All right, so these are the top 10 100-meter times when legal in the NCAA. Yeah. Or, and by NCAA, I mean 
college. Because look at how many NCAA Division I athletes are in the top 10. Number one is Sean Brown of Butler Community College, 10.04. Then you got Samuni Abdullah Rashid of Florida Memorial, an NAIA school, 10.04. Then you have Isaac Batisio of West Texas A&M, a D2 school. Then you have, I'm not gonna, I don't know how to say his name, Makawawi, New Mexico Junior College, a JUCO school, 10.07. Then number six, Manu, West Texas A&M, 1008. That's a D2 school. And then you have Daddy Z, sorry with names, from West Texas College, Western Texas College, a non-D1 school. There's only one D1 athlete in the top seven or top six, and that is Stanford. Yeah. When was Enrique? That's kind of – who would have had that? that that's kind of interesting. Those are the guys – Yeah. They're – Deep, like there's no LSU athlete, no Florida, Houston, all like yes, some of those guys have one wind aided faster times. Yeah. But I think it's interesting seeing Butler Community College, Florida Memorial, West Texas A and M, New Mexico Junior College, and Western Texas College all in the top seven. Don't you find that kind of interesting? Yeah, sorry I'm laughing. AJT says, How does Gordon pronounce every single name wrong? <laughs> it's not is it's not because he's he just has an issue with it. So yeah, it's, it's just how it's, it is. It's, it's, it's not done out of a lack of like he can prepare. I've done this with him before. We've said it five times aloud, and it just yeah okay yeah. That's anyway, just how it is. all right. But uh, the, what what do you think the reason is for that? JUCOs, JUCOs, D twos, NAIA's taking over the spring. I mean, are they running earlier? Like, is this? You'd have to show me what is what would twenty twenty two look like in this month? Yeah, was it because I remember Azamati. Was out there quick, so yeah. Maybe they're just putting down markers a little earlier. I don't know. I just think it's interesting that NCAA D1 is not the the best of the best right now. There's a there's a situation where you could argue that maybe Well, there was a moment last year when we were saying Azamati could be the Bowerman winner. Yeah. On the men's side. And then the other one that we thought was was Bassett. Yeah. Was that last year or the year before? I don't remember, but yeah. Where it was it was two non D1 guys. Do you think like I mean, you see some sophomores and freshmen here, so I'm sure yeah, all the yeah. NCAA D1 coaches are like, hmm, who, yeah. who are we going to get? You know, because we'll probably see all these names at Texas A&M or Houston or Florida or Oregon or wherever, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, there might be something about just talent is getting dispersed more and more. Maybe more areas of the world are being – and areas of the country being recruited. So there's more people just being discovered in general. Um, in an, like for going and going going to non power schools that could be part of it. I'm not sure. That's interesting though. I'd like to look at what it looked like the last like five yeah. five or six years because this does seem just like an inordinate amount of like ten o legal ten o's, all from non D one. Yeah, schools. yeah. Interesting. Yeah, West Texas A and M got two of them. Yeah, and didn't um uh blanking on it. Remember, we were talking about Texas. You were there. Were you there for the 4 by 8 at Texas Relays? Yeah. Pull up the Texas Relays results. We thought Texas might actually have a shot at collegiate record because we were talking about it. Iowa State, Iowa State, Iowa State. And they ran a pretty good team. No, they didn't run a good team. Oh, that the names but, listed were not who yeah. ran? Okay. Well, because did you see who won? I think it was, was the South Plains that won. Yeah. And just crushed everybody. And I was like, if Texas really ran their A team, my God. <laughs> but you look at the splits. They were – pull it up. Pull up, the, pull up the Texas Relays results. The splits were legit. So Thomas says JUCO, D2, NAIA Nationals are earlier than D1 Nationals. That's why. So starting their season earlier, which is what I was thinking. Makes sense. Yeah. That could be part of it. All right, Gordon's getting the results here. Getting the results. Uh, what are we looking at? Four the 4x8, eight? Eight, just the splits. And I think, it was, I think it was South Plains, wasn't it? Or maybe it wasn't. How do I find it? Gordon, Should have get, helped me Gordon getting this. stumped by a results page. This has never happened, folks. When did the four by happen? This is really this is rare. I thought it was Saturday. No, that would make sense. Yeah, it was Saturday. Men's four by eight. South Plains ran seven fifteen sixty six. They ran one forty nine. Yeah, one fifty two. Right, but then the one forty eight, one forty five. Yeah, at one forty five at the end. And, and you got to think the even the third leg they're running with a they won by a bunch they yeah. got no competition as well. They're having a one forty nine, one forty eight, and a one forty five all in the same JUCO team. JUCO team, That's pretty yeah. Impressive. yeah. But I think Thomas is onto something here about just 
their nationals are earlier, so they're yeah. gonna be they're gonna be on early. No. No, Nico, that's uh that's pen relays, Nico. Nico's doing his best over here. He's doing his We're best. looking for Texas relays. That's okay though. That's okay. Uh do you wanna pull up the you don't want to do it with the over-unders? You don't want to show people No, we should say okay. that. Well, let's just do them out loud. Oh, he's got it right there. Wow, look at that. Intrepid work by Nico. Wait, we can update these in real time. Oh, you already did it. No, I didn't update them. They're you not. Didn't... Oh, the result. So the Shikari finish, that was under, so I win that one. Margin of victory, we both got wrong because Sh uh, Sharika Jackson lost. Women's 200 time, we both went under. Oh, I thought I won that one. Oh, the men's, we went the other way. So I only gained one on you. Yeah, see, it's uh okay, not as exciting as not I thought. as exciting now. You I thought I had, talk about it. I thought no, you did not. Hold on, you did not gain because he ran under twenty seconds. It's a push. No, we've this, done this before. It's this a push. Is a green. This is a no. green, and this no. is a red. No, no, no. I'm gonna find the stock. This is red. Erroneous. All right, fine. Why is it? A, it's not a push. It's a push, man. The official time is twenty oh oh. We we did this on one of the previous forty picks that we had. God. All right. Hey, stop cursing. No, but the thing is, the previous time it was a seven oh four. You lost. Just deal with it. God dang. Any right. other comments? I gotta make a comeback. I'm running out in of the time. chat. You're running out of time. Yeah, yeah. You need to get it together. You need to start proposing eight to ten of these a weekend yeah. and just going on the opposite. So wait, what's the record then? Did you update the record? Uh, no, I didn't update the record. So I w I went. I got three losses. So I twenty five and two. And then you went 23. Man, you 20, are well 22. under 500, sir. Yeah. So I'm five back. Five back. All right. It's okay. It's nothing. You can do it. I still got, what, four or five months? Yeah. You got a lot of time. Yeah. We're fine. You got a lot of time. All right. Anything else? That's it. All right. If we didn't get to anything, we'll get to it on Wednesday. Like and subscribe. Well, also, I saw the Brian Clay entries. Oh, I was going to say, we'll talk about Brian Clay on Wednesday as well. Guess who's running? Non-college. Ooh. Not Kip Choge, because no. Boston is coming up. Kip Choge running the... He could do what Mo Farah did, yeah. which is like chill in a Run 10K. the Brian Clay, yeah. No. Ch chill in a 10K the week, couple weeks before uh, London. 1,500. Hmm. His name rhymes with... Matthew Mentrowitz. Oh. And rhymes with... <laughs> Why can't you just say it? Trent Misher. He's running the 15 or 5? 15. Okay. Grant Fisher. Cooper Tears running 15. Dude, that's a... Centworth running 15. That's a serious 15 to jump into. It may not seem... Uh, Oklahoma State 3K guy. Fog Masawi. Fog Masawi. Yeah. 15. That A heat's going to be... Cranny. Fast. 15. Good. All right. It's going to be good. We'll talk about that on Wednesday. Got a bunch of other meets as well, too. And then Boston Marathon coming up on Monday. So all the sprint talk, it's going to be replaced by no, Kip No, there's a talk. really big sprint meet this weekend as well at Florida. Tom Jones? Yeah. I know, but I'm just saying Monday, wall-to-wall -wall Kip Choge. Yes. <laughs> right? Well, I guess it'll be over by the we're gonna have We're going to have trouble because we're going to want to talk about Monday's the stuff gonna... that – Yeah, Monday we're going to have – Talk about People are gonna tune in for live Boston reaction, and Gordon's gonna be like, "Grant Holloway split like on that four by no. four. No, well, it's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit of both. There's gonna be people who are gonna be tuning in for the Kipchoge talk, and there's yeah. gonna be people tuning in for the. What if I sit Grant at the other Holloway. desk and just do simultaneously? No, not some. You can tune into whichever podcast we'll have you want. Two screens. Yeah. No, Distance we just take turns. Or... We don't listen to each other, so it won't be much different than any other okay. podcast. Okay, I like this. And we just talk on separate channels. A minute of sprints, minute of distance. And we should actually pretend we're listening to each other and having yeah. a conversation, but we're not. So I'd be like, so yeah, that opening 100 meter <laughs> split for that 200 was quick for Noah Lyles. Yeah. And then I'll just transition to Kip Choge. Speaking of splits. Speaking of splits, at halfway, yeah. Kip Choge is at 62. Let me one up you that. Yeah. Did, you, did you see the wind reading? I think both people would hate it. You'll be talking about the weather. I'll be talking about wind readings. You'll be talking about the pace. I'll be talking about. No, I'll be talking about the wind at Boston. Yeah. The Keep starts. All right, we got to roll. Nico, thank you for producing. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We sure do appreciate it. Uh, like I said, if we didn't get to anything, I'm we sure do. we might have missed something. Uh, send us an email or just throw it in the chat for uh, Wednesday. We'll talk to you guys then.